I've been studying business cycles, recessions, my whole career, but we still don't understand exactly what happens in a recession. It, it seems that one element has to do with coordination of different economic activity. That is, I depend on you to do your job, you depend on me to do my job, and as long as we're all functioning together, the economy can be quite productive overall. But uh, part of what happens in a recession is that I find my customers aren't there, I can't do what I was planning, and then that disrupts your plans as well. And uh, that's a process I'd like to get into in more detail to understand uh, exactly what's going on. Jim Hamilton's research has had a tremendous impact on the world, uh, and in several different areas. One of the things that graduate students around the world know Jim Hamilton for is his advanced text on time series econometrics, which governs how almost everybody models the economy. Our work has helped guide monetary policy in some uncharted new territory that we've gotten into. The traditional tool the Federal Reserve would use when they want to do something about unemployment would be to bring the Fed funds rate down. But at the end of 2008, the Fed funds rate was all the way to zero and unemployment was still shooting up. So Ben Bernanke, who was chair of the Federal Reserve at that time, uh, tried a number of innovative new policies to see if it could uh, help the economy. And I had one of the first research papers predicting what the effects of those policies would be. Well, in some research with Cynthia Wu, who was a graduate student here at UCSD at the time and is now a professor at University of Chicago, we suggested that the core mechanism would involve a change in the maturity composition of publicly held treasury debt. Basically, we concluded that, yes, these policies would have some effect, but it would take very massive uh, purchases of treasury bonds just to move interest rates a little. Uh, but now that the record's in and we're finished with QE3, uh, it looks like uh, we nailed that number pretty accurately. The other area where Jim Hamilton's research has really played a key role is understanding the relationships between oil price shocks. That's when the oil prices go way up and how the economy works. And what he's shown is that most of the recessions in the United States have been triggered by these oil price shocks. When I was a graduate student at Berkeley in 1979, uh, we'd had a couple of episodes where dramatic geopolitical events in the Middle East uh, led to big disruptions in world oil supplies, and they were both followed by recessions in the United States. And as I looked into that, I was surprised to find that wasn't the first time something like this had happened. Government monetary authorities didn't quite realize how these price shocks worked. And as a result of Jim Hamilton's work, governments everywhere have taken a better set of steps to try to avoid these recessions associated with these price shocks. We'd had seven recessions in the U.S. since World War II, and in six of them, there'd been a big spike up in the price of oil before uh, the downturn. And uh, so I ended up looking into that in my dissertation, and world events keep dragging me back to it. Uh, since then, we've had four more recessions. Every one of those, including the most recent one, there was a big spike up in the price of oil. Working with Jim is just always a pleasure because he knows his stuff and it's just a, an amazing person to work with in that regard.